Hi. Yeah, we are, uh, we, oh, that's English today. Uh, women Matter <laughs> in the Wisdom Factory. And we want to talk about the Integral European Conference. Three of us have been there and it ended yesterday. So you can calculate when the recording is. And oh, Beatrice is coming to, so that's good. And, but before we do that, as always, check in, check in, check in, check in. Uh, the first one who came here in is Martini. So you will be the first one to check in, Martini. You have to. <laughs> Thank you very much that it is possible again to see all of you. I am from Kritzendorf, close to Vienna. And we have a rainy day. It's raining raining, raining. <laughs> um, I have prepared today a self-made um, um, cream for my uh, wrinkles. <laughs> and it was a very difficult process. <laughs> and I hope that I don't have one wrinkle anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so I give over to a Kertrood, because she has her birthday today. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, actually, 65. Um, and I was at the conference from, when was it? Wednesday, Wednesday afternoon to, to yesterday night. 2.30. <laughs> and... Um, yeah, and my children are here, and it's it's really nice. So I will not uh, stay the whole hour, just to yeah, to have some celebration together. It's been a great day, and actually, it never rained on my birthday that I can remember of. And the last days, raining, raining, like you just said, um, and. And then I said, no, on my birthday, it doesn't rain. This morning, bright sun. <laughs> and now there are some clouds, but um, yeah. So this is uh, set that it never rains on my birthday. Yeah. I hand over to Christine. I saw you on and off, <laughs> but uh, I mean, it was so busy, like, and I was happy to see you and Tom, but uh, I didn't, didn't get to, yeah, have a chat or so. Yeah. Yeah. Hello to everybody. Uh, glad to be here. Um, yeah, I was in the conference most, well, a good bit of the time, but often with my video off, which is a little bit rude, but I realize that, but it. It was necessary in order for me to attend as much as I could. I, I couldn't always have my camera on. Um, but yeah, enjoyed it. Uh, I'm also a little bit exhausted from five days of, of all of that because it it kind of left, I don't know about the two of you, but it left me with no free time because every minute that was open, I tried to see if there was uh, something I wanted to attend. So it was a busy uh, few days. Um, we're looking forward. We have a holiday weekend uh, coming up this weekend, Memorial Day, and uh, Tom and I are going to go visit our daughter uh, in Northern California, flying on an airplane. So that'll be interesting. <laughs> but uh, people are doing that now. So uh, yeah, looking forward to it. Yeah. And I turn it over to Monia. Yeah, it's raining and raining and raining and that's the way it is in Vienna right now. And I'm very curious about the conference to hear from you. And I'm flooded with interesting reading material. Uh, and everything is sort of connecting now. The puzzle pieces falling together. So it's a very interesting time for me. I pass on to I don't know who's next, Hi, uh, Hani Lee. <laughs> Hello, everyone. It's wonderful to be here with you. I 
Two weeks ago, I was so busy preparing a proposal for a client in the US that I completely missed out on our session, which I really missed. So it's great to be back here with you. And um, I've been in a very creative space. So it's wonderful to be with other people. We've also been, uh, we have autumn and we have really good days, but at night it gets very cold. And I've been going out a lot into nature, also with friends out for the first time really after COVID started. So it's also socializing physically again, feels wonderful. And I'll pass on to Beatrice. Hello, everybody. Um, it seems that summer is beginning, which I'm not excited about. <laughs> I'm here in New York in Brooklyn, um, but the weekend was really, really hot. Um, and summer is my least favorite season, especially here because it gets really humid and sweaty. Um, but it's beginning. Spring is, I think, come to the end. Um, I've been very, very busy the last two weeks. I've had a lot of people time, uh, which is exciting and different after such a long time of, of you know, being inside and, and fairly isolated except for work things. Um, I had a house guest for a week uh, last week, which was lovely. We got to, and we went to uh, Storm King, which is this uh, outdoor hundred acre sculpture garden place, which was lovely uh, in upstate. Um, and what else? Uh, this week, uh, my friends uh, finished their master's thesis and the friends from my program and their friends that I've been uh, Zooming with every week for the last year and a half as we were finishing our master's degrees. And when I finished, I was still Zoomed with them to support them. And we've become really close over the last year and a half. And so uh, they finished and I never really got a graduation celebration. So they invited me into their graduation celebration. So this week we, we celebrated graduation and we watched the online graduation together. We went to one of one of their houses in New Jersey and um, took hikes outside and had dinner together. And it was really lovely to, to be in person and to celebrate. And we watched a baby bird fly for the first time out of the nest, which was mm. a great highlight. <laughs> um, and, and then yesterday, my mother and I attended uh, an 11 hour spiritual retreat, a uh, Jewish spiritual retreat actually, um, called the Divine You. And it was about identity and connection and who you are and how you relate to the divine being and how you have divinity in you. And it was really, I mean, it was 11 hours straight, <laughs> different speaker every hour. Um, but it was really incredible. Um, so that's, yeah, a lot of things going on, but all really soul nourishing and um, exciting. It's nice to have things going on again. <laughs> uh, I mean, not that I haven't been busy, you all know me, <laughs> but so that's, yeah, very positive, positive energy today. Um, I'm gonna pass, my mother seems to be invisible, but I think she's out there. So I'm gonna pass to her. <laughs> Abracadabra. <laughs> um, yes, I'm. I, I feel like I was just hit by a truck, so you'll have to <laughs> pardon me. Um, uh, yes, it was a very long day yesterday, and um, it sort of obliterated all my memories of my past life. Um, but it was a beautiful day. It was. It was. Uh, Pinkston. Oh, this is uh, the English group at Pentecost. And, um, and so I'm wearing my Holy Spirit shirt. Um, I don't know if you can see the dove. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Yes. Um, and so I went to church with Beatrice in the morning and the church was all red. It was so beautiful. Um, huge banners and curtains and um, so that was very exciting. And then, um, yeah, and then we went to this 12 hour Jewish conference um, and it was really amazing. It was, I'm, now I'm determined, more determined than ever to learn Hebrew, which I always wanted to learn, but didn't have time and um, the Kabbalah and I'm going into the ancient wisdoms of the past. So it's really, really exciting. But today, of course, even though I feel like I was hit by a truck, I have to turn my attention back to Joseph Boyce 
um, my third lecture is tomorrow night and I still have two after that. So I have to try to keep my focus even though I'm constantly distracted by other events. Oh, and Monia, I want to apologize to you for um, not responding. By the time I saw your messages, you had figured everything out. So I'm sorry, um, but actually I'm, um, I thought of you because I'm, I'm meeting with Donald Rothberg um, after this meeting this morning. Um, because he still feels um, badly about our conflict in the conflict resolution. <laughs> mm. <laughs> so that will be interesting. Um, and so, um, yeah, so that's a pretty much it from my end of the world, but I'm very interested in hearing from all of you. So I'm actually looking forward to just listening to all the gems that those of you who attended the integral conference gained, because I wasn't there, of course. Okay, so do I pass anybody or am I the last one? Oh, of course. Heidi's, Heidi's always last. Oh, Heidi. I'm always oh, first and last. Is, so. is that your house? That is my, yeah, the outside. But How it's not, I'm, I'm inside now. That's a photo. Well, still, it's beautiful. I'm going to come and live with you. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm <laughs> and so I that, asked, wanted to say ask, happy birthday. Yes. Who's can I birthday? Ask you? Thank you. So, Oh, is, Gerta, is it your birthday today? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, happy birthday. We should sing. We did. We did. Before the recording. <laughs> oh. I'm not to have it too bad. <laughs> did you sing yes. Hope Fills the Leben or did you sing Happy Birthday? We just sang Happy Birthday. birthday. International. Oh. Yeah. yeah. That was nice. That was All right. Nice. Well, and I got a happy birthday from 100 people tonight. Yeah. From wow. the conference. So I was like, the, the official part was over. And then it was uh, zero, 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 zero. And all of a sudden the door came, <laughs> came off and, and the, the, my, my family came in and hugged me and so on. So, okay, guys, I'm 65 now. And then they all sang and it was really nice. How nice. wonderful. Yeah. Well, hope sollst du leben and alles Gute. Yeah. Oh, oh, it's English again. Sorry, I'm going to wait. It's, now, it's all fine. Thank you. I have a question for Victoria. Oh, a, yes? kind of a check-in thing. Uh, is the dove still showing up at your home for Pentecost? And how are your nightmares? Oh, thank you, Christine. Um, the dove has, I have seen it a few times flying very high, but I know it's the, the dove because it's the only one in this whole area. Um, so it's been around, yes, but it hasn't rested here, which um, makes me a little concerned. <laughs> Maybe the Holy Spirit has withdrawn its, um, its <laughs> no, um, and my nightmares are getting worse, yes, but that's a whole new subject, but thank oh. you, thank you. Okay. I mean, thank you for asking, and maybe we can connect sometime, but I appreciate your concern, thank you. Okay, so I got over to the check-in. I had uh, two women from Germany last week for a week and I hardly ever was on the, on the computer because I preferred to talk in person and it was, was very nice. And then the day when they left, the conference started and it was, you know, every day from, I didn't do the morning practice, I started at nine and then it, up to 10 in the evening and yesterday even midnight. So, uh, yeah, I mean, the last day I didn't do the, the lunchtime uh, things because it was too much. It's like the head is going like this, but there were many, many, many interesting things there. Um, theoretical interesting things and also practical. We never saw Christine, we were in different uh, places. With Gertrude, I saw you sometimes in the, in the room. So as you have birthday and the whole family around, I wonder if you go first and give your impressions and then we let you go to <laughs> celebrate your day. Yeah, thank you. Um, it's hard to describe. I mean, these are, there are people that you only meet there. So it's, it's like, oh, you're there. And, and, and then sometimes in a very big, um, like a keynote or so, and you just sift through and saw some people and, and then you've uh, 
put personal messages in and and so it was like it was kind of a bees hive uh thing. yeah you are there and great to see you even if you didn't talk but it was just uh i felt like familiar people familiar space and in which things can unfold so it, yeah it was it was a very very um friendly space and welcoming and uh, so and and i i don't even know exactly when i was in which um con conference in which whatever for me the the impression i i got some some deepening so i was in a lot of meditative spiritual uh areas of the the conference and really being there and going deeper and for example i was with that russian guy uh eugene pushkin i think is his name so first i was like Pushkin, Pustoskin, I yeah think. something like that and uh so he has a very monotone voice and at the beginning i thought am i here <laughs> right and and then we had this incredible widening um experience with all our senses alert and i mean like taking in sensing and um yeah things happened like that so I had this feeling as if my being got deeper and wider. <laughs> so through many different things, I didn't go too much into lectures, like getting new information, more, more the where something happened, where spiritual, um, yeah, even practices, normal. We had, for example, we. I was in a in um uh, in one of the the courses, the workshops with the what they could art lab or so, integral art lab or so. It was looking at a painting and then answering questions. Why did you, Why did I choose this one? And by looking at that painting, the, the perspectives changed. So like, I'm looking at a stone, uh, at a gemstone beaming out, and then the perspective then changed. I was in a dark hole and the sun coming in. And, you know, the, so there were so many different, like, uh, qualities of, being sensing um yeah that i i was not exhausted actually i mean it was a lot and i was tired and so but but it was kind of expanding <laughs> and and i really liked it and there were some very good keynote speakers and um i don't know if you know vivian ditma with her uh, emotional thinking work. So, and I have to go back. So we have the recording till end of July and I have to go back and, and look at specific uh, people I couldn't attend at the same time. So I, I don't have much to report. <laughs> it's more more this feeling of personal connection and connect connection to source and and really like broadening widening deepening so that there was yeah in, in nice personal connections on the lunchtime so to see people and just have a nice and sweet and deep conversation. <sighs> Maybe I'm too full to, to <laughs> give specifics, but uh, yeah.
just was heartwarming and nourishing. Do you, rem do you remember what the focus was of Eugene's session? It was this uh, hollow, hollow, whatever meditation. So okay. meditating with open eyes and, and really getting the whole with your ears the senses, I even could taste something. Yeah. Yeah, he did that last year too. That was good. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And here Vivian did, well, I was there. Mm -hmm. The transpersonal thought and transpersonal feeling. And, and she had mapped out it uh, and, and then do some uh, breakout work. That was great, yeah. Yeah, I think that's about what I can, can tell. Yeah, so. Yeah, thank you. So if you have any questions who was not there, I can show you the program if you want to see it. Uh, and I can, we can download it all. So in case I will download that all. And if you yeah, have me too. some specific uh, thing, I can send you the, the, um, the. You can send the program and then they can uh, decide yeah, which good. one they want to have. Yeah, I can, uh, they cannot come in, but I can uh, copy it. Yeah, I can do that. Yeah. And uh, Beatrice, there was also art. And there was music, Victoria. Uh, very interesting. Yeah. Music, yeah. The, the Barbara Hunt with the guitar and the voice, it was really nice. She, and, the, and the one with this uh, strange instrument, I don't know how it is called, this round. This UFO. <laughs> <laughs> the um, hand drum or? Uh, I don't know. You know what I, what I mean? This, uh, it this looks like an UFO. Metal and, and then you, you play it with the hand and uh, it's beautiful. There were two people. And another one who had uh, 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 recorded the loops, he had a, a piano and then he also was on the on the guitar and also on the flute with the loops. It was a whole concert with one person. It was interesting too, very much. That's what I remember. Oh no, somebody else was still, this girl. Um, I think- Annie did, and Barbara. Yeah, no, the, she did the last yesterday night uh, with an amazing grace of her own uh, invention. It was Barbara. Oh, that was Barbara. So Barbara was Hunt. A, yeah. Another woman uh, singing. Yeah. And it was translated into Spanish, so even Spanish-speaking people could attend. So. Yeah, and yes. And yesterday there was a um, um, what do you say panel <laughs> with Jeff Salzman with uh, John Bunsell. And what's his, his, the other one? Steve McIntosh. McIntosh. Mm, yeah, Steve McIntosh and Indra Annan. Yeah. And that was really great. I really liked it. It was so on to, politics. Yeah, how to deal with the divide and why did it occur? And so there were very interesting sites, yeah. I, I like Steve McIntosh's um, description of conservatives versus progressives as being people who want to keep what is right and people who want to fix what is wrong, because um, it gets away from the value judgment and you realize that both sides, the keeping what is what is good and right and fixing what is wrong, both obviously have, have value. They, they both belong but it gets us away from talking about conservatives versus liberals. It, it's just a nice reframe of that polarity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and also what the woman said, uh, Indra, how was she called? Yeah. 
Oh, she doesn't appear here. They have put her in as well. She was the keynote the day before. Yeah, and she she was talking about um, what did she call it? Cosmo local. <laughs> so to have this broader view, but acting on a local level and then networking. So even beyond democracy. <laughs> Indra Adnan, the politics of waking up. And in the third moment, she talks about that uh, the politics and everything is very much masculine. And so it fits into our, our topics and that the feminine needs to be integrated. I think it was in her uh, this yes. talk or even in the panel, I don't remember. So this on Saturday, it was all more or less about politics mm -hmm. uh, in the, the keynote speakers. Yeah, and, and the lady from Bhutan. Yeah. Yeah, about the growth, happiness product. Yeah, instead of looking at gross national product, which is a market economic term, um, more countries are turning to gross national happiness. Um, and she talked about happiness as being not an emotional state, but um, just well being, quality of life. And they have, Bhutan uh, has actually put policies in place from the very top of the governance um, as to how they're going to uh, put that in metrics and how they're going to implement that kind of a policy of looking at the, the well being of people. And she did a good job of describing how, in fact, sometimes when gross national product goes up, and the economy is doing well, it's at the expense, you know, other things are going down because pollution and health crises and inequalities and crime and other things are going in the opposite direction a lot of times when product is going up. So they're trying to rectify that. Um, and uh, I've heard that kind of, not her talk before, but I've heard people talk about I think in terms of Denmark, uh, I think they have pretty much formalized uh, um, a well-being and quality of life uh, in Denmark. So I've heard that before, and I find it, you know, pretty inspiring. And hoping that more people <laughs> pick up on it, more governance uh, picks up on that. I hate to leave you, but I think that's. Yeah appropriate for today. <laughs> nice birthday. Yeah. yeah, thank you. Happy birthday. Yeah. Bye. Bye-bye. See you Thanks. in two weeks. Bye. So you who have not been at the conference, you, what would you have liked to, to hear or to see or to do if you were asked to give a contribution for the conference? What would you have offered? And then Christine, we talk more about what your what your impressions were. So, are you asking people what are they most curious about in yeah, terms what of it? they would have been curious about, or if they were in the position to offer something as a, a talk or workshop or something, what would they have done? What what are you burning for? What what are you interested in? And what would you like to give or to find in, in a thing like that, in a conference like that? So to include a bit everybody, otherwise we do a talk here and that's not what I want to do. I was thinking actually about Hanali when I thought about the well-being uh, thing and your joy. Are you frozen? Is she frozen? Or is it in my part? Ah, here you are. <laughs> <laughs> what I would have... Thank you for that invitation. My my internet connection is not so good, but if you can't hear me, just show me. Share. Yeah, you might switch off the video. 
you might switch off the video while you speak so yeah, we yeah. can hear you for sure. Right. Mm -hmm. Great. What I would have, what I feel now as well as you ask Heidi, I would have wanted to share an embodied experience, exploration of the eight wonders of being human at this time, which includes another perspective on equality. And it impacts economy, uh, well-being, just things you just spoke about, about Khan and likes. It impacts all of that. Ooh. Development goals. So I would have loved to share something like that in such an environment, um, an embodied experience and exploration. I hope you could hear me. Yeah, we could sort of hear you, yeah. <laughs> but I think we got it. Yeah, there were many of these things, explorations and even physical, let's say, exercises and, uh, and very emotional stuff. I was in a grief, um, in a grief seminar that was connecting to Beatrice, which was also very, very touching. It was not so much about uh, grief, but about forgiveness, you know? Uh, so loss, grief, forgiveness, and I had a deep experience in that. So if you had to decide, Beatrice, to work on this or on art, there was also, there is an art gallery also there. They did a um, vernissage in one evening, which where I didn't go after 10 o'clock in the evening. I really wanted to go to bed. But what would you have done if you had the possibility? I mean, you would have had it actually, but I should have told you before, some months before. <laughs> I'm not sure. I think I think right now my the part of my brain that can think of things <laughs> is shut down because I've been absorbing so much. Um, but I probably would have done something uh, maybe, you know, honoring honoring loved ones who have passed or, or some kind of altar building or something like that or some embodied practice relating to that. That's probably the thing that I would I would lead. Um, the thing that I'd be interested in uh, attending, well, it all sounds amazing. <laughs> I'm sorry I could not attend, but I'd love to see the program and take you up on your offer of, of seeing some of the recordings. Um, I'm interested in how integral practice connects with um, other schools of thought and um, world religions and uh, just kind of finding finding the connection points between integral and other ways that people live in the world and believe things. So I think that would be very interesting for me. It's kind of the an ap academic overview of your, <laughs> if you will. But um, that's I am always interested in that kind of the connection points. I think you can connect with Monia. She is quite fit in all these things. So. Um, I am past the phase of beehive meetings and I'm very much looking forward to meet Martini tomorrow in her exhibition live and talk and see and I sort of listening to Gertrude it's sort of fake reconnecting you don't really connect you just yeah you click and you write in, in a chat but I'm maybe I'm too old for this kind of uh, conferencing but Martini I'm glad that I will see you tomorrow live and your work unmute I'm very pleased and I am um, I don't know what to say but I accept what is coming because it is um, a, a very short time to invite the people. 
uh, but uh, some I got some beautiful reactions. I I uh, they they um, printed some invitations for me, and I had to go to the place to get them because there was no time to send them. And now I went all on the street. I went. I, I uh, uh, put all the the. Um, uh, I have überall geklingelt. Um, I, 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 uh, I rang the bells. I, yeah. I rang the bell everywhere. And we had such beautiful conversations. You know, I thought if the um, exhibition, if the vernissage is not good, I have already had my my uh, gifts. It was so nice. And uh, some of the people are coming. So, oh, I'm very pleased, Monia, that we are able to see each other. Yeah, maybe I can borrow some of your anti-wrinkle cream. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was just a joke. It's yes, just, uh, yes, I, I don't know. care anymore. Oh, but, uh... <laughs> uh, but I would very much like to hear more about the conference from Christine yeah. uh, and her impression and uh, which, which uh, workshops were particularly uh, new, because somehow it all sounds familiar when I look at it and when I listen to it. It's, yeah. Christine? Yeah, I, I don't know about new. Um, Doshin Nelson, who's a Zen, I don't know what he is, a Zen priest, a Zen something. Um, I don't know what Doshin translates into, but, uh, he, I saw him uh, a few years back in Hungary and he presented and the one nugget that I took away from his talk was um, that shadow is addictions and allergies. And uh, addictions is the grasping, how we grasp things and we wanna hold on to things. And allergies is when we push things away. We don't, we want to separate ourselves. So I liked that little nugget of how we can think about shadow, those things we grasp for and want to hold on to and uh, the things that we try to push away. So I found that helpful. And, um, you know, the, the conference in general, I, I tend to like the, the keynotes and the more intellectual aspects, learning things and getting those little nuggets that I then use. Um, and I contrast that with my husband, Tom, who really likes the experiences. He loves the breakout rooms where he can talk to people and share something and, and uh, get down into the, you know, what's arising for me right in this moment. But um, I don't I don't like that as much. Uh, it feels a little well for me. It's not tremendously genuine. I'm always thinking about well, what am I supposed to say or, or what am I feeling right now? And I'm, I it takes me a little bit more out of uh, the experience that I want. Um, sometimes the breakouts are good. Um, there's always a lot of them, uh, so you get to practice that a lot. And, and sometimes it's useful and hearing what other people have to say and sharing uh, can be great. Um, but a lot of times you end up with people who are very broken and need a lot of caretaking. And um, I, don't, I, I don't go there for that uh, experience. I have enough of that uh, every day almost, so. Um, there's always a combination of people who show up at big conferences like this. There were over 700 people there. Um, so there's always a, a wide uh, a wide group of people, some who have different agendas and, and uh, just need a lot of, they're there, really, I think, really to be cared for by a, a group of people to be held. Um, so that's my experience of big conferences like that. Uh, it, it does bring out the intellectual side of me and I keep looking for that, you know, that we space, that joining of people. And sometimes I hit it and sometimes it passes me by. So, yeah. 
That's about what I have to say. <laughs> yeah. I, Heidi? I, yeah, I enjoy the breakout rooms and I had only once this experience with a woman, which I know from a other conference who has this thing, you know, of needing to be in the center of attention. But then she went away when I started to stop. <laughs> Otherwise, I had always uh, good connections, mostly people I didn't know, sometimes I knew them, but I got interested in quite a few of them and we exchanged uh, addresses. And so for me, it's a, a way to get to know more people which I didn't know yet and with whom I would like to continue the conversation also in regard to the, to the interviews, you know, so it's a good uh, way for me. And then I feel that it's really, I saw many people which I know from before or even not. And for me, it is like reconnecting, really. Yeah. And the, it's also, you know, we, uh, I know you, but uh, Monia and the others, I know only by this little box, but I feel connected. And that was also, there were two or three moments in some workshop where it, there was really a deep, sense of being together and it's really amazing how that can be and i think it depends on the single people who are there and mm -hmm. the energy they are giving into the room and what i see with these conferences that it's very good uh, it's it's not a conference in the normal sense where you go there and you get somebody talked on you and something like this it's more like a i don't know it's 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 working with all senses, not only with the head, not only with, uh, you know, uh, like, like, for instance, the last uh, conference I saw in live stream from America, I think you were there and Tom, it was only talk, talk, the next one talk and, and here there is music in between or there is uh, the workshops where some of them very experiential so it's, it's, yeah, like Gertrude said, I was tired, I was completely tired, but not exhausted. I was nurtured by it. But, you know, it's many hours and I don't even know how to sit after a while, you know, it's doing, uh, running around on the, on the seat. So now for me, uh, uh, as a theoretical thing, Peter Murray, I liked a lot. He has found a way to reorder the spiral as not hierarchical in some way. Uh, he, he, I don't know, did you see it, Christine? He, no. he sort of, he does it in circles. I mean, you were there, Hanley. I oh, know you were not there. <laughs> uh, and in the center is the blue. And then he uh, connects together the orange with a, with a red by a circle there together and so on. I, I was seeing if he has the, the, um, the download of his slides, but it's not yet there. Otherwise I would have shown you. Uh, his uh, idea was that desperate need to reintegrate beige and purple. And that's uh, really important. And to this, I was also happy that uh, uh, Rika Villon was there to commemorate Lorraine Laubsche. And uh, I, I love that because she is one of the great women of our times who nobody knows. <laughs> and we had, uh, I had her uh, last year come to the conference and a, a month afterwards she, she died. This one of these women, she did her PhD with 83. So you imagine what sort of, <laughs> of um, a woman she is and she was always friendly always and she was very much into beige and purple and when she was in the hospital uh, and nobody could come to see her Rika told us that she said yeah I'm observing how it is in in beige how we are living in beige so she had a positive um attitude also in this moment. She had no COVID, she was, she had other things, but because of COVID, nobody could come and see her. So, uh, but she died at home. Uh, she could get out of the hospital before that. Anyway, I was happy that she was commemorated. And then there, there was Patty and her colleagues from South Africa and talking about uh, this different way and also about what we could learn 
we Western cultures from these cultures, which are still nearer to, <laughs> I would call it a normal life, you know, and how much our Western thought, we take it for granted that our systems of thinking are uh, exported all over the world and that they are the right ones. We don't even doubt it. And in this context, the talk of Charles Eisenstein, that he was the very first one of the keynote, he was addressing this. And I really liked it. He said that integral theory in the, at the end is the same thing as everything else in the sense that it tries to, to control to control the uh, thought or whatever it is. And I said, oh, yeah. And uh, then together with the African input, I think we have to rethink. It's now 30 years, or I don't know how long uh, Ken has come up with a, 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 with a theory. It's time that we continue, we or whoever is called, to integrate more things, to make it more integral in some way, you know? Yeah, that was uh, mainly, and then the grief uh, thing. Oh, oh, and Vivian Dittmar, it was very good also, her, her practice. I liked it a lot. And Gabor Mate, uh, his was, talk was called Beyond Biology, Mind, Body in Health and Illness. It was much about trauma. He is trauma specialist. But I was always a bit skeptical of him, but seeing him there and afterwards in the workshop, I became very much interested in what he is doing. I think these were more or less the highlights for me. So I didn't go to Tom because I thought I would interview him in a second time. And instead I went to Gabor Mate. And Lynn Fuentes, the koan of illness. She is also talking about illness as something else uh, than we consider what illness is, you know? That was good too. But I will send you the, the, the program. It was rich. Some um, Half of the people I knew, half of the people I didn't know, even by name, of the presenters. So I'm curious to, to watch and listen to more of that. Oh, Paul Smith, um, uh, whole body mystical awakening meditative practice. He is doing the Integral Christian Network. Don't know if you know about that. Uh, I joined them one and a half years ago and then we did a German um, speaking group. Uh, it's, it's interesting. Yeah. Heidi, how did you feel your presentation went? Ah, yeah, it went quite well. We, we, did, only, we did about the integral salons. I have created a, a sheet with all the addresses and the links, for instance, to the talk I had with Monia before. And I first I gave an, a, um, a short historic overview, and I realized that salons have always been a way for women to be part in cultural and scientific life because women held these salons. And even before before Christ, there were women in Greece who were holding, holding normal philosophical philosophical salons, but also the mysteries of Elysium. No? Monia, we, we read the immortality key, the religion with no name. That was all held by women until the Catholic Church uh, in the fourth century, they, they established the institution and kicked out the, the women. And then the integral salons, they are often led by women, more often than, than by men. So it seems to be a very old way for us to connect people and learn by connecting. So what we are doing here, by the way. Mm -hmm. So yeah, and afterwards, uh, we, we three of us, we, we offered a short workshop. And one person, she was talking about salons, how to do it. And she had the most people. She had 15 or 20 people in her room. And we other two, we had three or four in our rooms. But it was fine. When we talk like this, 15 people is too much so it was a nice um, experience but the the breakout rooms are not recorded so it's only the the introductions there was mm -hmm. one person talking about we space practice uh, and me about the history and that was it it was quite smooth we had 25 or so people that's normal in these uh, circumstances in the morning when the american the participants are still in bed. <laughs> so, 
Yeah. So far, what I could say about the conference. Um, having attended twice in person now and twice online, um, they are very different experiences and being in person uh, is so much easier to connect and make friends and, and uh, meet people. So I'm, I'm looking forward to next year when they do it in person again. Um, it, it's the experiences, uh, as Heidi said, it's, it's multi-sensory. There's, there's food, there's music, um, there's dance, there's all kinds of things that are, are part of the experience. So it's, it's really something. Ritual, not the fire ritual is always very nice. Yeah, yeah. It's like that, yeah. But it's cheaper online because coming yeah. from America to Hungary and paying the hotel or whatever uh, mm -hmm. sleeping place, it's, it's quite a bit, you know. So, and it's different. With the breakout rooms, you meet people and you, you know, which maybe in, in person you wouldn't have uh, met because in person you choose the ones, you know, with whom you want to speak. He, there in the breakout rooms, they are presented to you and then you try to, to get on, which is a nice challenge too, in my opinion. So, yeah. Thank you, Heidi and Christine. Now, I just want to say thank you, Heidi and Christine, as she was speaking, and even Gertrude. I was just feeling into the energy and had like tickles all over my face, specifically, especially here when you were sharing, both of you were sharing, like an opening of or expansion of awareness when I felt into the collective energy of the inner of the conference as she was sharing. So for me on that level, it's, it's if I'm, you're giving me with a sense of what happened there on a sensory level. So thank you for that. That's nice. I like this. Thank you. Yeah, in fact, it is, it is an experience. Also, you sit in your own home on your own butt, but uh, it's, it's, the energy is transmitted and it's capturing. I, I was going to go back to Beatrice's question about how does integral interface with other wisdoms or whatever. And, and, and Monia, you may be able to articulate this a lot better. But my sense is that integral, the name implies that it is supposed to incorporate all the perennial wisdoms, that it accounts for all of it or at least he was trying to account for all of it. Um, and that was the point of integrating that we have gotten to a point in our humanity uh, or evolution where we can now look backward and see patterns and how things have come to be and that there's recurring patterns and recurring wisdoms and, and um, the philosophies that uh, have emerged and we can account for it and kind of, um, I don't wanna keep using the word integrate, but we can account for all of it and understand all of it and see how it all fits together. So his is very much a model that doesn't try to separate things out as much as see that there's, um, a continuance and an evolution of all these wisdoms. Monia, do you have something else to say about that? Uh, yeah, well, in our salon, we are now uh, retreating to Wilbur Three, uh, One Taste. And I find it very nourishing because first of all, there are so many links and so many uh, books mentioned. I have been now buying Shankara, uh, the, uh, in German it's the Klein or something of, dif of differentiating. Uh, I have ordered Krishnamurti two books because uh, 
there are so many impulses in it. And to say, uh, Wilbur, it's such a long time ago, it doesn't apply because his motto was transcend and include. So all his former phases are still included. Uh, Wilbur I to Wilbur IV. Um, and uh, of course, now I read it differently. And I know that uh, just shunning the body and just concentrating on the mind and the soul uh, and then leaving your family to get enlightened, it's just a stupid, uh, it, well, it's a culturally conditioned approach or perspective. Uh, I've learned to speak more uh, softly now. Um, on the other hand, I know that Krishnamurti's words have a kind of pull. They pull you when you read him. So that's, this is why I ordered these two books, uh, Commentaries on Living. I could have done that tens, decades ago, but I never read it that closely. So I just brushed through it. And this is what, what, the, what we are now doing. We are trying to go back to the roots. And I love this idea of uh, what Heidi mentioned, Peter Mary, uh, getting the spiral circular and not hierarchical and blue at the center because you need some rules and Jordan Peterson's 12 rules for life they just fit in too it's uh yeah it's it's really I'm learning every day I'm learning something new and this is really a pleasure and I'm very glad for that um does this answer your question? It's just, uh, I can, I, this is where I am now, where we are now. And of course, we have someone who feels he is very advanced. <clears throat> and uh, reading Wilbur of the former stages is like retro, romantic, nostalgic. And I don't even know what the word is in English, but in German, he called it a Wilbertrachtenverein. So it's uh, uh, because he is urban and leftist and he's an arrogant, well, an arrogant person. <laughs> and I don't let that pass. And to me, as Heidi mentioned, uh, by learning, learning by connecting, th these are called soft skills, but in actually they are not soft skills. They were very, very strong skills. And uh, yeah, listening to people and not just taking their energy away when they are enthusiastic about something. That's just the meanest thing you can do. I don't know how I got to that, but it, it, this is what uh, really, uh, what we've been writing. Usually we didn't write after the salons and after the Zoom sessions, but now all of a sudden people go deeply into uh, what concerns them. And this is new. So there's a new quality for me now in the integral theory. And I don't, I can't agree with Eisenstein. Maybe I, well, I didn't listen to his talk that integral theory tries to control. I don't think so. It's just tries to give you a map for navigating. Yeah, that's clear. He's saying that too, but it's on a deeper level, it is an instrument to put things in a in a place and this is controlling you need to see the whole thing it makes sense when you when you listen to the whole thing but oh, i wanted uh, to say who is not yet in integral uh, i think the one taste and who is interested in spirituality the one taste book is a good a good entrance into it it is about his own experience and uh, he is push, putting in the, the the theory in some way it's called One Taste in, in English, so it's about 12, 15 years old or something. Uh, in 98 it was published, so it was okay. still his, he was still uh, with the transpersonal movement mm -hmm. and Frank Wisser was still not in his Oedipal phase, he was still <laughs> leaving him on a, up there and he didn't have to pull him down as he has done ever since. So. Uh, it's quite interesting to know, and you notice why Wilbur had to leave the transpersonal movement, because otherwise uh, he would have just concentrated on this one line of development as the transpersonal people do. 
and uh, yeah so uh, reflecting on that also is very very uh, pleasing yeah very pleasing and we had quite a couple of people who are now buying it for the first time in our salon so it's uh, so whoever claims they read Wilbur well <laughs> Okay, I, I pass on. Yeah, I I learned uh, two new acronyms. Uh, so um, I don't know if anybody has ever heard of the acronym Weird. Oh. Anybody hear of Weird? It stands for people who are white, educated, industrialized, rich, and democratic. So the you know the container of people who come from this kind of echelon of uh, whiteness who who are privileged. So they use the term weird, <laughs> and um, the other one was Jedi, and that stands for justice, equality, diversity, and inclusion. So they use the term Jedi to kind of incorporate all of those um, values. So that was kind of interesting. And uh, the other thing to mention is that the movie Grace and Grit, uh, based on Wilbur's book, Grace and Grit, which I highly recommend, it's my favorite of his books. It's really, it's a very personal book. It's not theoretical, it's personal. And um, the movie's coming out June 4th. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know they mentioned Apple TV, um, but I think it will go to all the streaming services. They said all the streaming services eventually, right, Heidi? I, I think can't so. I not remember. I wasn't there when, when the, the interview was done. It was oh, okay. Night. So yeah, um, I'm I'm puzzled by democratic at the end of weird. Uh huh. <laughs> I would have said Republican, but. <laughs> Uh, maybe then it wouldn't, it would have been Wirp. <laughs> it's not really. Well, I don't think they meant, meant political party as much as just a society that is representative, so, oh, you know, by oh, democratic, oh. I think they just mean a representative society where there's voting that's going on. Mm -hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, but that's interesting. And Jedi, of course, yeah, that's nice. Mm -hmm. Okay, ladies, if there are any other questions, remarks, otherwise we go into the check, ch check out or both we can do. I hear only noises, but no voices. <laughs> I will check out. Um, Martini, I just want to wish you all the best for tomorrow. Um, I'm sure it will be a, a huge blessing and light. And thank you, ladies, Christine and Heidi, for sharing your experiences and also Gertrude in her absence here now of the conference and everybody else who contributed. It's always great to hear other people's experiences and their perspectives when something like that has happened. So thank you for that. And I'll pass to Victoria. Thank you, Hanali. Um, you're, all, I, you're always so gracious, it's hard to follow you, but um, I echo everything you've said. So I thank those of you who shared on the um, conference. It sounds really amazing. And I, I'm amazed that you can even speak coherently after so much input <laughs> because it's, it sounds very intense and very complex, but interesting. Um, uh, yes, and Martini, I wish we could be there tomorrow for your opening. That's so exciting. Please um, take lots of pictures if you can. And um, and 
maybe make a little film about the vernissage <laughs> so you can share it with us next time. Um, Monia, I want to make a plea here and now in public um, so that it's, it's fixed in stone. Um, I understand what you mean about being tired of the beehive or whatever it was you said, which was so great. But please don't give up the beehive for, for at least for, um, for the sake of those of us who can't meet you in person yet. <laughs> because I think the big highlight for me um, of the pandemic, and I really hope things aren't going to change, um, is that I, I now feel like I've met my tribe, um, thanks to Heidi. And it's so miraculous. And so, you know, it's synchronicity on steroids, as they'd probably say in America. Um, it's just been such a blessing and such a wonderful thing to, to get to know you because I don't have any kindred spirits here in the flesh, um, especially because Beatrice is in Brooklyn, Beatrice in Brooklyn. Um, on that note, I'm going to pass to you, Beatrice. Um, but please, so Monia, please put up with the beehive as long as you possibly can. My <laughs> tribe, our... my tribe is not the beehive. <laughs> this is my tribe. <laughs> I'm so glad to be in your tribe. It's just wonderful. It's a privilege and an honor. And um, so I'm sure Beatrice feels the same way. So Beatrice, you can you can second my motion to keep the beehive going. <laughs> Don't tell her what to do. She's the next generation. <laughs> oh, that's right. That's right. I stand corrected. <laughs> um, yeah, I know. I just echo. I do echo everything that's been said so far. Um, wonderful to hear your experiences. I'm very curious and I hope to um, get to watch some of the sessions or get some more, more insight into what every, everyone learned. Um, for myself. Um, always grateful to be here. I, <laughs> it's, it's one of the constants in my life and I love that. There's not a lot of things that happen very regularly in my schedule, but coming to Women's Matters every two weeks is a delight and I never want to miss it because I, I really, yeah, you feel like my tribe too. And it's strange because I've never met, the only person I've seen in person <laughs> is my mother. <laughs> But hopefully one day we can we can all be together um, in real life. Um, and congratulations, Martini. That's so exciting. I, I hope there's some digital ways we can participate with you. Um, and I know Gertrude's gone, but maybe she'll see the end of the recording. And so belated and continuing birthday wishes to Gertrude um, out beyond the Zoom screen. And um, yeah, that's it for me. I'll pass to Christine. Um, well, thank you for listening to us today and being so gracious about that. Um, just want to wish Martini uh, best wishes for your exhibition, but also Victoria, you're also presenting this week. So uh, same to you. I know it's a lot of work to put those things together. So I, I hope that goes well. And I hope you both enjoy it uh, more than anything. I hope you uh, get a sense of satisfaction and enjoyment. And I will pass to Monia. Uh, Christine, I wanted to ask you, uh, are there still fires in California and do you get smoke there in, in Oregon or? Because I just read that Robert Angus Masters moved away from Oregon because there was too much smoke in the air. So are you still aware of? Uh, um, well, that was last fire season and fire season will start well, it's not yet because it's it's not dry enough mm. yet. The fire season is end of summer into the fall. Um, so yeah, maybe uh, uh, it varies. The it, They expect fires again this year because it, it has been so dry. We haven't gotten enough rain. Mm. It, okay. It's interesting. If, if it rains too much, they say it's going to be a bad fire season because there's all this growth of, of kindling and, and stuff that can burn. And then if we don't get enough rain, it's too dry. And they say it's going to be a big fire season. So it's yeah. like. Because Masters now fit, didn't feel safe anymore, he wrote. Hmm. I don't know. Yeah, that's it. And, and we don't hear anything in, in Austria about fires or about the cicadas that are now uh, swarming in Virginia. 
uh, it's, uh, you don't hear it here. And these are some of the plagues that really should bother us as such. They, they turn out from the soil every 17 years. And then they just, yeah, you can't stop them. So this is really, uh, it's amazing that we don't hear about, since we are also planet minded, uh, this is something we really should uh, have in our news and not, oh, let's not talk about our news. So this is my checkout. I thank Heidi and Christine in particular and Gertrud. Oh, to be 65 again. <laughs> yeah, thank you. And Martini, until tomorrow. <laughs>I didn't understand everything, but I think it is a, a special uh, theme and uh, I would like to, to understand more of it, but we cannot do everything. I um, wish Victoria a lot of fun with her work and all of you with your work. And I'm looking forward to tomorrow. I really enjoy um, what is happening. And I'm not afraid what's happening because the, the two, I met two young, um, very dynamic art historian girls, uh, a woman and at the age of uh, 40, middle 40, 50. And they uh, have such a power and they will um, uh, interview me. And I think, oh, how great. It could be my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> and I hope that it is very fine and I'm looking forward. And thank you very much for this beautiful um, uh, being together. And I give to Heidi. Yeah, thank you. Martini, also from me, I wish you all the best for tomorrow and very many people coming to see it. And as Beatrice said, hopefully some video or something, some photos from the uh, uh, Vernissage, it is called. Um, so we can see it next time, would be great. And I wish you all good next weeks and uh, do whatever you like to do. Life is only is, is shorter than we might want it to be. So we need to fill it with things which make joy and fun and whatever, which are engaging all of our senses and all of our heart and whatever. So thank you. And we see you in two weeks. Bye bye. <laughs>